Introducing Vinia, a new miracle superfood from the Holy Land that is clinically proven to increase your blood circulation and the delivery of oxygen, resulting in improved physical energy and mental alertness. So order your Vinia today at ViniaBloodFlow.com or call 800-600-3619. Vinia, changing blood flow forever. I like to think of the example of if God promised you a car, mm -hmm. let's just say a car, and your garage is full of boxes, it's just full of boxes and old furniture. Mm -hmm. Faith would make you begin to clean out that garage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Regardless of when the car comes, I know it's going to. And so I'm going to prepare for what God is going to do. And I'm going to pray for the grace to have patience in the waiting. Um, and so I do think that we still have to act on what it is that we believe. No, no, there's somebody out there who felt like God spoke to them and felt like they understood that something good was coming, something they were praying for, and they're believing God for that. Maybe it's husband or wife. Maybe it's, you know, this dream job. Maybe whatever, a child. Yeah. And it's taking a long time. There is this gap where we feel like God wants us to have a thing. We believe in some way that he's given to, but we're in this like weird middle space. What do I do how do I respond to that? What do I do when I'm experiencing God's delays? Oh man. Um, well, first a little personal story. So um, my husband and I, we've been married for 18 years now. We have two sons, they're nine and 12. Um, but we were married for about five years before we decided to start trying to have children. And of course, like most couples just assumed, you do the do, boom, there's a baby, right? Yeah. Um, but I think about eight months into that, I, I wasn't pregnant. And so we decided to go to an infertility specialist and just, you know, have things checked out. And I got diagnosed with infertility. And um, it was it was just such a difficult moment because number one, I felt like I as a woman had failed. I was like, how is it that my body is unable to do the thing that it should do? I'm married, we have a great marriage, this is the next step. And so I prayed about it and I believe I heard the Lord say that I would be a mother. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, ready for tomorrow. Like, here we yeah. go, Lord, you tell me a mother. Um, you got a week basically <laughs> yeah. for me to see a plus sign on this pregnancy test. <laughs> um, but more months went by and, and nothing happened. And so the uh, doctor said to us like, hey, if you wanna take this medication, it should help you ovulate and, and you should be able to get pregnant. Did that, still didn't get pregnant. And I went back to God and I was like, Lord, you promised me mm -hmm. that I would be a mother. Like what's taking so long? And in that moment, I had a revelation that when God makes a promise, number one, it's faithful and true. That's absolutely positive. But what God doesn't do is he doesn't say when. Mm -hmm. And the reason he doesn't say when is because God operates outside of time. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as tomorrow or next day or a year from now with God. Like God operates outside of time. And so what may feel like a delay for us, it's perfect timing for God, mm -hmm. which is why I had to learn to pray mm -hmm. and ask God for the, the grace of patience in that season. It was hard, it was very, very hard. And as a matter of fact, we did get pregnant eventually, but had a miscarriage. Mm. And you talk about yeah. like crushing, you know, yeah. for all of us that have been through that, crushing, because you're like, okay, finally, Lord, you came through. So hard, yeah. And then it was like, wait, but Lord, this, not, this is not what you promised me. You promised I'd be a mother. Um, but shortly after that miscarriage, got pregnant again. And it was almost like God- How long was, did it take? Well, like after the miscarriage, it wasn't long. It was yeah. maybe like a month. But between, I'm sorry to ask this question, but yeah, between when you felt like God, when you- When told, he spoke to me? Between you got pregnant the first time. Oh man, it was probably about a year. That's a long time. It was about a year. Yeah, and, and you think again, look, we're yeah. married. Mm -hmm. God, we're honoring what your word says. Like, we should get pregnant immediately. Mm -hmm. So it was a year, and that year felt like a decade. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, it gets into understanding that God operates outside of time. And Lord, my prayer is, God, not even so much that you will be faithful to your promise, because I know that. Like, you'll be faithful to your promise. My prayer was, Lord, help me to endure the waiting. Yeah. 
And that is hard. But I think that's that's a learning for me. Do you think there's something else too that maybe I want to be careful about trying to force God's timing? I think Correct. that's a mistake we make. But there's also the opposite of that mm -hmm. opposite part of that coin where sometimes people don't want to take the pill, for example. Yeah. People don't want to go see the doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my friend told me a story about a guy who f found a pile of rocks and over two years he turned the pile of rocks into this beautiful garden and everybody mm -hmm. came out to see the garden. And some pious person came and felt that people weren't giving God enough you know, glory. And so this, he found the gardener and he said to the gardener, wow, this is an amazing gardener that you and God made together. And the gardener, understanding the point, sort of said back to him, yes, I'm without the principle of the seed and yeah. the soil and the sun and mm -hmm. the good weather. None of this would have happened. And he said, but you should have seen it when God had it all by himself. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> it's a funny story. But it's true. It's true. I think... The, so there's there's a challenge, and you bring up a really good point. It's like on the one hand, faith is you know we're fully trusting God. God yeah. spoke something that may be impossible, but I'm fully placing my faith in God. I'm believing Him. On the other hand, there is the extreme of well, God said it, so I'm just going to wait on it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do anything about it. But I like to think of the example of if God promised you a car, mm -hmm. let's just say a car, and your garage is full of boxes. It's just full of boxes and old furniture. Mm -hmm faith would make you begin to clean out that garage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Regardless of when the car comes, I know it's going to. That's and good. so I'm going to prepare for what God is going to do. And I'm going to pray for the grace to have patience in the waiting. Um, and so I do think that we still have to act on what it is that we believe. Think about Abraham and Sarah, right? Yeah. So that's a huge example, right? Yeah. God made this promise. I'm guessing that Abraham and Sarah we're probably intimate yeah, it probably <laughs> in expectation of this promise, right? Abraham wasn't like, you know what? Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Immaculate conception. Um, so I do think that when we trust God and we have faith in God, it prompts us to act in accordance with what he's promised. And don't you think that in between zone is an opportunity to also do personal development to become yeah. a different kind of person, prepare yeah. yourself for, in this case, being a parent, mm -hmm. prepare yourself for being in that new job, prepare yourself for being in that new ministry or calling. Absolutely. Sometimes, and see, this is the sign of a good, good father. Sometimes the delay is because we're just not ready, mm -hmm. right? So my nine-year-old literally came to me when he was seven and said, mom, I want a Bugatti. Now, first of all, he will never get a Bugatti from me. Ever. That's like a million dollar car, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what do you, but he came to me and he asked me for that. Well, I don't care if he asked me for any type of car. Mm -hmm. He's not ready for it. Now, he knows that when he's of age, that we will help him get some sort of transportation. Sure. But he's not ready for that. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, sometimes God delays because there's still some some work that needs mm -hmm. to happen. I'm so grateful that my husband and I were married for six years before we had our children because it helped us to work out some things that honestly, if we hadn't had that time, probably would have been a problem mm -hmm. uh, when you add children into the mix. My grandpa famously said that God's delays are not God's denials. Yes. Yes. And that's something that I think is that we need to hold on to. Don't you think that it, maybe the trap is seeing any kind of long delay as seeing that as a no yeah. rather than just a delay? I always think that God has is spinning a million plates, you know, and they all have to sync up. That And there's something maybe that we don't know that has to happen within us or even something unrelated to us that has to happen first before, you know, this this dream is fulfilled. Do you think no, that's happening too? I think you're absolutely right. And I, I want to take a moment to pray for those who may be watching this and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, that, oh gosh, you know, this delay is permanent. Mm -hmm. um, if you're watching this and you have found yourself in a season of waiting, in a season of what feels like delay, I want you to take heart in the fact that God is faithful. There is not one promise that he has ever made that has been left unfulfilled. The question of timing is really one of our human understanding because we have segmented our life into minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. But because God lives in the uh, eternal, for him, his promise will happen and it's going to happen when he said. So I wanna take a moment just really quickly to pray for you to have patience in the waiting. Father, for those who are watching and are feeling frustrated, um, they're feeling frustrated because, Lord, you told them something that they have placed their heart in. 
God, they've placed their faith in. And they're getting, they're getting overwhelmed by the time that it's taking. I pray, God, that you will calm their heart, calm their mind, whether it's through people who are proximate to them, God, through words uh, that you speak through the Bible as they study it, God. I pray that you'll give them hope, that you're faithful. You cannot lie. And I pray that you will give them peace in their heart to receive the promise that you've made, regardless of when it's fulfilled, recognizing that it shall come to pass according to your word. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.